Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my annual presentation on the accomplishments of SAP Business One in the year 2022 and a look into the crystal ball what we plan to do in 2023. My name is Rainer Zino, in charge of product management for our mid-market solutions, SAP Business One, SAP Business by Design, and a proud member of the bigger S4HANA community with a special interest in S4HANA Public Cloud. Intentionally, I picked this picture here with the crystal ball. Um, we are trying to project what may happen in 2023. And if you would look at my video, which I shot exactly the same time last year, uh, you would have seen uh, that we were not particularly good in sticking uh, to the release dates, which we had actually promised to you. Uh, what was the reason? Uh, some of you may remember that uh, I told you that we are building up an additional team in China to ramp up the web client development and then the lockdown hit us. And uh, you can imagine how difficult it is to hire a new team during the lockdown in Shanghai. So that was one reason. Uh, but we solved it, we brought the team on board, and we are on a good path today. And then came February of 2022 with the war. And what we saw in parallel was a spike in attacks against cyber infrastructure. And not specifically to business one, but in general, SAP then said, we need to further improve our security measures. And product standards that were originally only thought for public cloud, where we expected most of the attacks, we decided let's apply them also to all SAP solutions, including business one, despite the fact that it's an on-premise solution, but we wanted to make sure that we provide the maximum security for our customers, irrespective of whether they operate the infrastructure on their own on-premise side of the house, or they consume a cloud-based service from our partners offering B1, or they are using the corresponding SAP services. And this obviously um, basically led to a situation where we had to redraw the entire development plans. Uh, and just now, uh, this week, we were able to deliver the 2208 release, which we wanted to have in the market a lot earlier. Therefore, when you look at my presentation today, uh, I will not present to you exactly the release plan for 2023, because uh, as we speak, um, this is still in the making. We still have a couple of things to do, which we would like to introduce on the security side, web client, and so on and so on. But let me talk you through what we have done in 2022 and where we are going. Let's first start with a high-level strategy slide. And I'm using exactly the same slide for business by design. And if I would shoot a video for S4, it would be the same thing. What SAP does is we work along three dimensions. Number one, our key obligation, specifically also with business one and business by design, but equally with S4, is to keep the core stable. That is the most important thing. That's what all of our customers rely on regarding compliance, security, and we need to keep the solution attractive. And that's where the line share of our investment goes into. At the same time, we need to make sure that we are providing the best possible infrastructure. And that does not only include SAP, but as I said, also our partners offering B1 in a, in a cloud-based fashion. So also here, we need to do whatever we can and harden out the infrastructure, harden out the tooling, and decouple more and more the business one application from the underlying architecture, from the underlying server stack. That said, the year 2022 is a really important one for SAP because for the first time, we are now able to deliver net new business processes for business one, business by design, and S4HANA just once. 
We built them on SAP's business technology platform, and we then integrate them with B1, with by design, with S4HANA Public Cloud. When we started this endeavor, end of 2020, and some of you may remember my announcements from the summits in Mallorca, a lot of people said, well, whether this works, we don't know. But we said, hey, we are proposing to our partners to develop on BTP. Then it's obvious that we need to do the same thing. And we intentionally picked our carbon footprint management solution because this is something which I would like to have across all three solutions. And with the 2205 release in May this year, we delivered the first version initially integrated with by design. With 2208, I'm very proud to announce that this solution is now also available with Business One. We also open up the APIs. So if partners are listening into this presentation and they think, hey, this is a cool solution and I have a manufacturing extension and I would like to leverage this opportunity, then talk to us. The APIs are available and we help you to get this solution running with your extensions. So that is very important because that is the strategy for the future. When we build net new business processes and carbon footprint management only was the first one. Next one might be something around cryptocurrencies. I have the first business one customers who say, we want to pay in cryptocurrencies and we want to receive payments in cryptocurrencies. And even if you don't believe in cryptocurrencies, trust me, your central bank does. And we will see, like we are seeing it in India today, and China will be the next, uh, the European Central Bank also published a white paper on the e-euro, which we will most likely see in the year 2025. So digital central bank money. And again, this is a perfect example where it makes a lot more sense to do it just once and not three times in a row. So that is the high level strategy. If we quickly look into business one, we are still in the fourth quarter, therefore I'm not giving away any numbers here. But um, from the performance of the three quarters before, which we've already publicly reported, you can see that B1 is as strong as ever. It is the solution in the entire SAP portfolio that contributes the most net new names to the bigger SAP family, and that makes this solution so super important with over 75,000 licenses and sold to customers, 1.2 million users. You know all of these numbers, uh, they speak for themselves. What is our responsibility? We want to keep business one, as I said, secure legally compliant and attractive. And we do this around all of the dimensions. And in a few minutes, I will show you a couple of demos on the consumer grade user experience. The built in integrations and the integration into carbon footprint management is one more testament. The powerful, the powerful platform that is mostly SAP's business technology platform, the cloud infrastructure, be it provided by partners or by SAP, and a topic very dear to my heart, I wanted to make sure that all of the capabilities that we have through BTP at our fingertips, be it uh, the supplier invoice recognition, that you take a photo with your cell phone and you process it in business one, be it the robotics process automation capabilities that we introduced in business one this year. I wanted to make sure that these capabilities are not only available in S4 and in by design, but equally in business one and with one new feature uh, in the area of image processing or supplier invoice uh, recognition, B1 is even leading and we are introducing here a capability that we don't yet have in the others. Regarding the roadmap for business one, uh, we've published the roadmap 2023, but as I said, uh, we will probably redraw uh, one or the other topics. 
but the high level uh, will remain the same. If you would like to see the roadmap, you will always find it on sap.com slash roadmaps. Scroll down a little bit in the area of the featured roadmaps. You find the mid-market roadmaps. You click on business one. If you haven't registered already, please do so. And you will see that picture. I will not talk you through the details of the Business One Roadmap now. My colleagues, uh, Peter Dominic or Ari Shapira can do that much better than I can do. And they have published videos and blog posts on this topic. So I take just a, comp a couple of aspects which are really important for us and uh, to explain to you where we are taking B1 in the years to come, because B1 is a long term strategic investment of SAP. I always say uh, be one forever and people said can we have t-shirts with that slogan on it and I said obviously yes. So what do we do to make business one future proof? Um, here we are working closely uh, with the Global Partner Executive Council um, where we basically test drive our decisions and, and ask for feedback. And also that group was very instrumental to help me even with the board of SAP to get additional resources so that we can build the web client for SAP Business One, a web-based user interface that meets all of the requirements. And when I talked about a consumer-grade experience, uh, that, is, that is what we are doing. So, this is a multi-year journey. This is nothing that we can do overnight. And obviously, this investment competes with investment on the legal side, on the security side. At the moment, the priority is on the security. Uh, therefore, I'm not quite as fast as I like to be. But uh, you will see in a minute that the Business One web client is taking more and more shape and form. I would say I'm good 50% done. Uh, with, a, uh, with a total scope that I want to accomplish. So we are on a good track there. The topic that was my highlight in, in 2022 when it comes to the B1 web client is the built-in analytics. That is just amazing. And um, I will take a few minutes to demo this capability to you. Next topic, and I've already indicated it very dear to my heart, everything around machine learning and artificial intelligence. Um, we needed to get our hands around and make the advantages of, of artificial intelligence and machine learning and automation tangible for you. And the way how we are doing it is last year we inv invested significantly into the uh, supplier invoice recognition capability and everything else that we can do with image processing in business one. The next step was analytics and the third step are now the automation scenarios. Here are six bots that we've delivered. And if I only take one here, business document extraction from email, this is a customer scenario where a customer only sends out an invoice once he has evidence that the goods arrived with a, with a customer. So uh, the shipping company provides the goods to the customer. The customer signs the delivery note. Uh, the, the person who provided uh, the goods takes a photo, sends it back. And now at this customer's, there is somebody who is just sitting there day in and day out, watching this email inbox, looking at the incoming emails, opening it, looking at the picture, hoping that it's not too shaky, hoping that the person photographed uh, the numbers, then goes into business one, uses the enterprise search, identifies the corresponding sales order, attaches uh, the image and produces the invoice. This entire process, which spans multiple solutions, starting with Business One, Microsoft Outlook and others, all of that is covered now in one bot. And imagine what this does productivity wise. I've, I know that many partners are using these uh, IRPA capabilities, intelligent robotic processing automation, or I think SAP just recently renamed it to SPA, SAP processing agents or something like that. 
but this is digital transformation for your customers at its best and therefore get your hands around it i can really recommend this capability to you uh, one of the topics from the security area was uh, that we enable you to do identity and authentication management uh, based on single sign-on technologies and you see at the bottom the list of all of the B1 services which are already enabled uh, to work with a single sign-on more to come so also this is a journey uh, but that is something which was high on the wish list of many of my partners we introduce um, the new user experience and it is called uh, the horizon skin and this is something which we do across all of the SAP solutions because our ambition is that we provide you a consistent look and feel irrespective how many SAP solutions you are using. At the same time, we continue our journey with the Business One web client. I just picked here one topic from many out of the 2208 release, uh, which is the web client can now handle the purchase requests and many other things. So this is the continued journey. Another part starts now. And this is the web client extensibility. It is great that we at SAP can build these capabilities and provide customers with web client based scenarios. But at the end of the day, the, the secret sauce of business one are all of the extensions provided by my partners. And therefore the most important thing is to make the web client in itself extensible. And the journey starts now. Um, so with user defined fields, um, you can do that today in the web client, but it's a multi-year journey. Something that we have planned for 2023 is that you can introduce new tabs and then add additional logic behind it. So stay tuned for our 2023 roadmap. And at the summits, uh, I'm sure that you will see a lot more about the extensibility because I need the buy-in from all of the partners to take their extensions and make them web client ready because web client is the future of business one. That said, how does roadmap building happen in general? Roadmap building in general is done along multiple axes and, and there are some dimensions which we are which just we are in charge of for example everything around security because we are the experts we have all of the knowledge there also when it comes to legal compliance we contribute a lot automatically but we rely significantly on the customer influence requests and Peter Dominic and his team are scanning all of the influence requests on an ongoing basis they are categorizing them and responding to them and this is the chart which I show once every year to prove to my customers it is worthwhile to raise these influence requests. I know that some people say, hey, three years ago I raised an influence request and it's still not available. Yes, this may very well happen because obviously we can only consider those influence requests which fit into the standard. Um, if something is rather better done in a partner extension, uh, then we will inform you uh, that this is our decision. But here you see how many influence requests were raised, how many influence requests were considered during re uh, the review cycle, already offered 21, delivered 42, accepted for planned development 38, and so on and so on and so on. So Peter and team are doing a great job there to take all of your considerations into, into the way how we built the roadmap. Before I talk about the next topic, uh, the new processes, let me quickly give you a short demo of the Business One web client, how it looks today. 
Um, and I want to start off with Business One Web Client here in the New Horizon theme. Um, some people said, hey, it looks like an Apple application. Yes, at the moment, the majority of influences from the consumer side is driven by Apple and what they are doing. But the important thing, as I mentioned, is we are doing this to ensure consistency across SAP applications. And just that you've seen it once, so this is the Business One web client. Here, I have the same Fiori paradigm, uh, and this is actually S4HANA Public Cloud. Here, I have the same Horizon theme, but this time with Business by Design. And here, and that happens when I talk too much, and here, uh, I will show that in a minute, um, I have the BTP author reading application, which is an extension like a partner would build something on BTP for business one. And then again, you get exactly the same look and feel, the same behavior of the tables and the same behavior of the search fields. So with that, let me go back to business one. Let's go to full screen mode um, and show you one or two things here. And today, I, as I said, I'm, I'm super proud of what our teams um, and Avinom, Frankl, and a lot of other colleagues contributed here, the analytics capability. We wanted to have a built-in analytics in Business One. And how does this work? Uh, so here I have the open invoices. And the first thing that I can do now is I can do relative searches. I can, for example, say, show me only those invoices for the last eight years to today. And then the system puts a filter on top. If I now want to analyze this amount of invoices, then obviously the list is probably not the best that I can do. Much better uh, would be a graph. So let me pick here a certain graph type. And now I can say, what do I actually want to visualize? It is not that relevant for me how many documents I have, but um, the revenue total, that would be very interesting for me. Then the second dimension that I would pick is, I would pick uh, the posting date, the year, and let's pick the quarter. And last but not least, I would like to see the drill down by customer. Customer name. And here I now have this list in a graphical representation. That is already quite nice, but people would say, hey, Rainer, I can do the same thing in Microsoft Excel. Absolutely, you could. But here are a couple of things that I can do in here. And this is not just a representation. This is an analytical application in itself. So if I click on this box here, it says, hey, this is 135,000 US dollars and I can see uh, the document details already here. If I would say I need an analysis of these elements here, then I can see the total is this here, the involved, uh, supply, uh, the, the involved sales invoices are these ones here. If I want to know how much revenue I generated with this customer, MaxiTech, then I see in total it's uh, to one, close to 1.3 million US dollars. So, and you can do many, many more things with this capability, filter, sort, and so on, and so on, and so on. So, this is a great analytical application in itself, and it works throughout the entire SAP Business One system. If I go back to the main screen, then um, the second dimension of analytics obviously is that I have a separate tab here. And here I can now manage multiple data sources. So if I just showed you now one example just with one data source, then you can compile entire dashboards with all relevant information uh, that are important for you. So that much about the B1 web client, how it looks like in 2022. Um, this was a live demo 
of a out of a 2208 system. Analytics was already part of 2202. Uh, the new horizon theme is a capability of 2208. So that much about this capability here. Now let's go back uh, to my presentation. As I said, business process innovation will happen mostly in a way that we build these net new capabilities on SAP's business technology platform. And we've done that this year um, with the first one, SAP Product Footprint Management for Clean Operations. I'm not super excited about the title. I wanted something like CO2 footprint uh, calculation for business one, um, but that is the more generic title because it is part of a bigger product footprint management family of products. What does this do? Um, imagine you have a little bakery and the bakery has a carbon footprint inflow of 4.2 tons. And your customers, now are asking, well, what is the carbon footprint of a chocolate cake and what is the carbon footprint of the fruit cake? How would that work? Let me show you this here live in our system. So this is the landing page and I want to show an end-to-end -end process. Again, here I'm using uh, the single sign-on capability because I will need to retrieve information also from business one. So I'm not going through the guided procedure. I'm doing it here live for you. The good news about the carbon footprint calculation is that you have a lot of data already in your underlying business one system. So the first thing that you can do is you can set up the master data replication. This is where we retrieve from the underlying B1 system or any underlying system. As said, we've published um, the APIs and I'm really inviting specifically those B1 partners with own manufacturing solutions uh, to integrate their solutions with this net new solution with this net new carbon footprint management opportunity. So these are the objects that we are replicating. With that, I have the foundation for the transactional side of the house. And I can now say I want to import all of the business transactions. I've already done that uh, so that we save a bit of time here and we don't need to do that. This is something that you would typically do once a month. What is missing now is the allocation of the energy to the individual production steps and with that later to the product. So how do I do this? Therefore, we add, a, we add an energy flow model. And let me use this one here. And I'm using here the graphical flow modeler to show you how the whole thing looks like. So what you have is you have a model and we are only for the simplicity here, we are using two energy sources. We're using natural gas and we are using electricity. And here you can see now how the production looks like, uh, where we consume in which machine, the corresponding energy sources. You also see here all of the meters where you either report back on a monthly basis then the readings or this would also be uh, a great IoT scenario so that you directly get the information from the machine. Once you have that, you can then calculate the carbon footprint for your different products. And as I'm a big fan of chocolate cake, Let me look here. So we produce chocolate cake. Um, let's take this production lot here. 
And what the system now presents to me is the total carbon footprint. So of that production lot of chocolate cake, I produced 3.6 tons of carbon emission. So how did this actually happen? And this is very important because what you want for your customer is that they can do at least two things. Number one, disclose the carbon footprint of the products that may be in the purchasing conditions of their customers. But the second thing is, and that is nearly even more important, you want them to understand how does the carbon footprint actually happen. So if I click here on this uh, line item, then I can now see uh, good news for us chocolate lovers, the dark chocolate uh, doesn't have the biggest carbon footprint, so we can continue eating. Also, uh, the baking ingredients for the biscuit doesn't matter that much, but um, the chocolate assembly is the major topic. Now, you may ask why the chocolate assembly? At the end of the day, if you think about it, it's understandable because first you need to melt the chocolate, then you need to apply it to the cake, and then you need to freeze it uh, down again. So that is a, ver a very heavy process. And if you look into this here, you see, okay, I use electricity and I use the cooling. Uh, if I click here on the electricity, then you see that the fruit cake uh, which we are also producing has a much leaner uh, carbon emission than the chocolate cake uh, that we are that we are consuming here. So you get um, the, the idea behind this concept, and then you can see that the major driver is uh, our cooling system. And if the company decides to lower their carbon footprint. This is probably the area where to invest. So that as an example of a new application built on the business technology platform available for our business one customers with 2208. And that is the way forward how we will progress. That said, if we are choosing this way for us, then we are obviously also inviting our partners uh, to leverage business technology platform. And I had many conversations with partners who said, Rainer, thanks a lot, but you know what? We have a hell of a lot of experience already building on Amazon, building on Google Cloud, building on Microsoft Azure, building on Ali Cloud. Honestly, why should we consider business technology platform? And to be very clear, every partner, every customer is free to choose their platform that they are using, and I'm not checking where you're coming from. What I can offer is that if a customer buys an extension, then they implicitly expect that you, the partner who builds this expect, extension, meets exactly the same security requirements that you introduce a similar look and feel on the user interface, that you are as strict as SAP on data compliance and data regulation, uh, GDPR, just to mention that as one standard, and so on and so on. And when you use business technology platform with the provided programming models, then you get all of these capabilities. You inherit them by using them. And therefore, this is, and I said it here, rather inherit, don't recode. Yes, you can build exactly the same look and, uh, look and feel also when you use the React framework and, and build the application there. But why would you want to do it if you can have all of that from SAP? So therefore, we inherit a lot of capabilities to you. And very importantly, we show you the way how to do it, both for a one-off application, but also for a multi-tenancy application. And when we show you how to run it for a multi-tenancy application, we also show you how to do it in the most cost-effective way, so you can distribute, and that is very important for the SSPs here, you can distribute the cost of BTP across all of your customers. And that is uh, where I think we have a lot to offer uh, at SAP. And as a closing for today, let me quickly show you an application which we built. And I asked my team 
built me an application that we would never build at SAP and built it exactly in the way how a partner would do it. But here are a couple of boundary conditions. Boundary condition number one, I only want to log on once. Boundary condition number two, it must look like B1 web client. Boundary condition number three, total cost to the partner shall not be more than 2,000 euros a year if they sell the application 10 times. So, and that is what my colleagues built. They built a little application uh, to organize poetry slams. And what they have basically done is they've modeled now an additional business object. And you can see that the look and feel is exactly the same uh, what I've demoed to you. Um, so you have a header with information on when the event will happen, how many seats, uh, what is the participant fee. You can also see uh, who are the people who are already, are already registered for this one. And you can then directly link to the underlying ERP system. I can't yet demo this with a business one backend system simply because we are still working on enabling the project uh, for the B1 web client. Uh, therefore, I can demo it today for by design early next year for S4HANA public cloud. And then at the summits, uh, I'm pretty sure that we can at least show you a first glimpse how this would look in business one. So for today, I'm, uh, whenever I create such an event, we quietly create in the background a project. And uh, here I'm branching out now to buy design and when I'm in the application I can click here on view all and I would see now the Gantt chart plus all of the underlying capabilities that I can record. Um, if I bought additional microphones, I can expense them here. If uh, the participants have travel expenses, I can record them here. So to tell a long story short, this is what the business technology platform can do for you, my partners, to make it easy to try out BTP. Uh, we've done the following. We've created a public Git repository, which everybody can clone. So if you go to this address, you will not only find the application, which I just demoed to you, you will also find all of the tutorials in there, how to set up your BTP account, how to build the application, how to make it multi-tenancy aware, how to deploy it into the runtime, and so on. That said, Thanks a lot for your attention. Um, 2023 is starting right now. So I'm really looking forward working with you for the future of Business One version 10 with the web client, with the capability to extend via the business technology platform. With that, thanks a lot for your attention. Looking forward to seeing you at the summits in 2023. Goodbye.